10 simple tricks for needle results with double pointed knitting needles. Hi everyone, Norman here. Are you struggling to get neat results when knitting with double pointed knitting needles? Or maybe you find it's a little bit too difficult as a whole. Well, I'll tell you a little secret. I personally find knitting with double pointed knitting needles so easy and efficient, I can basically do it in my sleep. And I never really end up with ladders or gaps. So let's head over to my desk and show you all the little tips and tricks that made all the difference for me. Tip number one, when you're knitting ribbings in the round, don't place the gap between a knit stitch followed by a purl stitch. Why? Well, if you've seen my video on how to knit needle ribbings, then you may already know that for continental knitters, this little strand here connecting two stitches is always a little bit longer than normal whenever you switch from a knit to a purl stitch. And it's shorter than normal when you switch from a purl stitch to a knit stitch. It has to do with the way stitches are mounted on the needles and the yarn, uh, the way the yarn has to travel when it switches from one stitch to the next. I'll link you my full video with the full explanation up in here. For now let's take for granted that this strand here is a little bit longer than normal. So and if it coincides with this gap which is also longer than normal well then that spells disaster. Instead I will purl these two stitches and then ensure that my gap is here where a purl stitch is followed by a knit stitch. So because this little connection is shorter than normal and the little something you will automatically add uh, whenever you knit in the round, the little something you add here around the gap, it will balance things out because normally this strand here would be shorter. Well, because of the gap, it will be a little bit longer. And I feel this is such an important tip and it will make your ribbings truly shine when you're knitting in the round. Always have a knit stitch as the first stitch on your next needle and you will also notice that it's a little bit easier to knit. The next important issue concerns knitting complicated stitches at the beginning or the end of a needle. So what I often see is people knitting the gusset of a pair of socks and then they place their SSKs or knit two togethers at the very end of a needle right next to the gap. And then the decrease line here doesn't look neat as this, but with a lot of holes here left and right, or when they do a German short row heel, then their last double stitches end up with big holes here because they placed those double stitches too close or right at the gap. And why is that? So here's the thing, a normal knit stitch is defined or the size of a normal knit stitch is defined by the barrel of your needle. When you knit a stitch, you need to fit a second uh, needle into that stitch. So what happens is you wear that stitch out. There, you can't do anything else but wearing it out. So what will happen is this loop here steals yarn from the adjacent stitches here, one row below and from this stitch. As you knit this stitch, you enlarge this loop and you wear it out like that. But typically that is no problem at all because as you knit the next stitch, here as you knit the next stitch, it steals the yarn back and closes this stitch here. And in that manner, you kind of transfer the slack all around. However, when you're knitting an SSK or any other complicated stitch, let's do that together. You wear out this stitch, then you wear out this stitch. So both loops here are bigger than normal. And then you combine them. And the problem about that is now you have two stitches on top of each other. That means there is a lot of friction. So when I knit the next stitch, when I wear out this stitch, can you see, you can still affect this stitch here. 
I can still affect this stitch here, but the loop here, the second loop, you can't affect this anymore. And that is typically the reasons, reason why your SSKs and other left-leaning decreases might look a little bit sloppy. Now there are ways to fix that, but this is besides the point. When you knit such a complicated uh, decrease, or any other stitch here right at the end of your needle. What will happen is you wear this stitch out, you wear this stitch out. However, because this little gap here, this little strand here is always longer, even for an experienced knitter, this little gap will always be a little bit longer because there's always, well, it's the gap after all. So these two loops will are bound to end up a little bit larger and then you knit them together through the back loop in this case and this means this top loop here will also automatically be a little bit larger than normal in this loop here below as well. Uh, but they are fixed so when I, when I now continue on to the next needle to the next needle. I can still somewhat close this, this stitch here, but this stitch on top will always look a little bit sloppier. And that is precisely the reason why you should avoid placing such difficult stitches or decreases or increases at the beginning or end of a needle because they can steal this slack and feed it back into the gap and so on. And that is, you know, if you combine these two, it spells disaster. If you scroll through the comments of my old how to knit in the round uh, on double pointed knitting needles tutorial, you will notice that one of the most frequent questions is, my project has the pearl side outside, what did I do wrong? Well, you did nothing wrong. You can absolutely knit in the round like this and the pearl side is on the outside. So, and in this case, you can easily also just flip things around, flip things around, and then continue knitting here from the outside, just like that. However, there is a very, very important difference here, and it does concern ladders as well, and typically you want to knit in a way that the knit side is on the outside. So when you bridge the gap and you want to purl the next stitch, you need to bring the yarn to the front so it's on the outside. And when you want to knit the first stitch, the yarn is here on the inside so you can knit it. And this is very important. Think of it as runners on a track. There's always an inner track and an outer track. And this direction here, this path here, is much shorter than this path here. This is much longer and typically that's why the runners will all switch over to the left side of the track uh, if it's a long distance run. And that's precisely the reason. So what some people may have observed is that they never have ladders and suddenly they knit a project in reverse stockinet stitch like these socks here where the smooth knit side is on the inside and suddenly they see ladders all over and that's precisely because they suddenly took the outer track. So whenever you have a pattern with a lot of purl stitches, especially here around the gaps, consider inverting it. So your purl stitches, you bring the yarn to the front. So that front yarn can take the inner track instead of having to travel all the way around. And of course, I mean, you can purl like this all the same, but now the yarn can here, it can stay here on the inside instead of traveling all the way around. Of course, the difference is just, you know, one millimeter or so, but that can be all that matters and that can be uh, what prevents those or one of the reasons why those ladders don't appear. Now this problem runs both ways. So whenever you're knitting files, stranded knitting or whatever, you have to create floats on the backside. Now what happens if you have to create a float across the back? Say like this, well, without any further adjustments, 
The float will take the diagonal and this means it would be much too short and later on the fabric would pucker. Now of course normally you wouldn't create such a long float anyway in Fair Isle but suppose you would and I think it serves to illustrate the problem very very well. What you can do in this ca these cases will you invert your knitting let me adjust this and now when you knit that stitch see that float here stays on the outside so it takes the longer route and thereby it doesn't end up being too tight it can't take this diagonal anymore so if you have problems managing your floats when knitting fair eye or stranded knitting in the round do consider keeping the pearl side here on the outside so you don't mess up your floats you can take this concept even a little bit farther. So say you have a project that has a very, very pearl heavy section somewhere in the middle and you don't like purling or there are a lot of complicated pearl stitches like pearl two together through the back loop or so and you want to avoid this. Well, what you can do is you can turn your project around and simply purl in the other direction. So of course this means you would have to place a proper short row stitch like a German short row stitch here as I do now and then you knit in the other direction. Again don't do this at the beginning or the end of a needle but in the middle otherwise your um, double stitch or the short row stitch will wear out and it's gonna be not pretty and you absolutely have to place a double stitch otherwise you will end up with a hole and then I just knit across probably want to invert this as well as I go so I want to invert this and then I can knit across get these super night nice and neat uh, transitions here around the gap because I can take the inner diameter and I avoid purling. Now I personally don't think purling is very difficult but sometimes when you're knitting in the round purling is just not as neat due to the uh, very specific me mechanics of knitting in the round and then you can just knit in the other direction. And once that purl heavy section is over uh, you can just turn around place another short row double stitch and then knit in the other direction again invert your project as you go and just like that you avoided furling so definitely an option I even do this sometimes because some of my little toy patterns feature very very difficult increases and decreases on the pearl side and then I feel well, just knit in the other direction to have it a little bit more comfortable. Tip number four, find the perfect needle position. Another thing you may toy around with is your needle position and the way you manage those double pointed knitting needles. So when I knit in the round, I typically do it like this. So when I finish a needle, I rotate my project around and then I bring this next needle here to the top and then I start knitting across. Of course, I will tighten up here after the second stitch. However, if you notice that despite all care you still end up with ladders you might consider switching your needle position around a little bit. So in these cases you can knit with this position. So here at this end it's below and here on this end it's on top. Now this will make knitting more complicated stitches a little bit more difficult as this needle here is fixed. This, this needle here acts as a guard so you can't move this needle here around a bit but of course that is working as intended so because otherwise you will always whenever you rotate things around here you will as you do this here as you this, do this movement you always stress these gaps and while you're knitting this here your, 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 your needles are shaking around as well and this puts stress on the gaps as well. However in this position see whenever I rotate around the needles are always in this position so um, they are a little bit more fixed here as you knit and you don't need to 
manage these needles either and this can help to prevent gaps and ladders uh, when knitting with super delicate yarns. Um, I found this really helps or very small needles. Try to toy around with this needle position. Sometimes it helps me and maybe, I mean I don't know how you knit, maybe this position here, just the other way around, so it rests on top here and is below here, works easier for you. Or maybe you need to keep the needles below to print ladders. I can't tell you what will work for you, but it's definitely something you may consider trying out. Knit a little swatch in the round and see what happens sometimes when the yarn is super delicate. This here helps me. Oh, and just one tip here, if you really want to understand what ladders are, what causes them and how to prevent them for advanced knitters, then I recommend uh, checking out my Patreon account because on my Patreon account I have a full masterclass that is dedicated to ladders. Uh, it's available on the highest tier. I'll put a link in the description below in case you are interested. Join yarn the right way. So a big issue for many beginners is joining in a new color or ball of yarn. And you know there are simple ways to do this when knitting flat right at the beginning of a row and later you hide the tail in the edge. When you're knitting in the round you don't have an edge and there's nothing to hide it in. So what most people will do is they start a new color or a new ball here, they join it in here right at the edge. And that is something you absolutely want to avoid because as I said before, you, this little strand here will wear out a little bit anyway. So you want to avoid any, any technique that, well, creates a loose stitch here as well. And joining always creates a stitch that looks a little bit different than all the rest. So you want to avoid this. So the most important tip here is when you need to join in a new color, always do it in the middle of a needle. So you don't stack the, the problematic first stitch in the new color with the gap stitch. And then you need a proper joining method that does not involve any knots or so. So I have a full video on joining in a new color. I'll link it up to you up in here. But when I knit in the round, I do it like this in 99% of all cases. So it's called twist and weave and goes like this. I pick up my new color the normal way and I leave a little tail here. And then I insert my working needle into the next stitch as if to knit and then I take the tail and place it in between these needles, in between, secure it with my thumb. Then I pick the tail of the old color and cross it, secure it with the thumb. Now I pick up the tail again and wrap it around my working needle like this. Then I wrap my working needle around the working yarn and then I would wrap the tail back and pull down and see this creates a little stitch. See this little stitch here around the needle and now I can pull that stitch through. I'll, if this is too fast I'll link you the slow motion video in the description below. And now this creates a super secure first stitch, maybe tighten it up a little bit and then I can continue knitting. And you can then weave in the old tail as you go. So with every stitch that you make, you wrap the old tail around so you don't need to weave in any tails later on. You could do that with both tails. However, I notice, especially when you're knitting with thinner yarns or a looser gauge, that uh, the new tail will kind of peek through. So I will weave this in as I go in the next round. And this also avoids creating a too lumpy little ridge here on the edge, which might be a little bit noticeable later on. So just in case here in the next round with every stitch that I make, I wrap the tail around my working yarn to weave it in as I go 
and then later on you can cut things. Now just a little warning here I'm knitting with cotton yarn and with cotton yarn I wouldn't weave in as I go as it's a little bit too slippery but with your standard wool you can absolutely do this. Now here's another important issue I want to address. So I see a lot of people knitting with only three needles and one working needle. Now I can understand that this may be a little bit easier to handle at first since the three needles are a lot more stable. And if you like, definitely consider knitting those first couple of rounds with three needles because with four needles it can be very unstable and difficult. The problem starts if you continue knitting with those three needles, especially if there are a lot more stitches in the round than here. And then say you want to slip stitches from this needle here to this needle. And often you will notice that it's almost impossible and you need a little extra needle to do that. But if you can do it, you will put a lot, a lot of stress here on these gaps here because as you can see it can only, you can only do this if you are more or less holding your needles parallel. However, if I knit with four double pointed knitting needles and say I want to, oops, say I want to uh, slip stitches here from this needle to this, well the angle here is a lot more comfortable for these gaps so this means I put less stress on these gaps and this means ladders are less likely to appear and now you might say well I don't slip stitches around all that much. Even if you just knit like this, even if you just, let me slip this back here, even if you just knit like this, this angle here is a lot steeper and this means these gaps will always always experience more stress and this means ladders are more likely to appear. Now you might say well if it's all about these steep angles why not add a fifth needle? Well because then we are even closer to a perfect circle and these gaps will experience even less stress. Well that may be true however five needles also means this whole contraption has a lot more freedom of movement. So initially these gaps here are at a much more comfortable uh, angle than four needles. However, as you knit they will always move around or they will move around a lot more and with every such move you put stress on these gaps and this means five needles typically also means more needles and I found that four needles is where the magic happens. Now personally I make one exception to this golden rule and it applies to super small circumference projects so when you're knitting toys or something like that. Below 16 stitches I will typically knit with only three needles and that's because uh, if I was to distribute these nine uh, stitches to four needles that would mean that basically every second stitch would be a gap and then this gap here it would this gap stitch here would be directly next to another gap stitch and then they kind of wear out themselves and it will be a lot more unstable and typically that doesn't look very good. Also do remember to keep your stitches distributed as evenly as possible across all four needles. A lopsided project like this one here also means that this gap and this gap here will experience a lot more stress and that two will be visible and ladders could be the result. So typically people experience this, this when they pick up stitches from the, from the heel flap if they want to knit the gusset here. And then as you pick up stitches you end up with one or typically it's two needles with a lot more stitches than the others and a lopsided project like this one here. And the problem is as you start knitting and you will instantly notice that it is a little bit more difficult to shuffle your stitches around and that is because well this side here in this case is too short and this means and you can see this is already happening you are 
stretching this little gap here outside and this is your ladder in the making and then you knit across and with every little stitch you stress this gap and once you are on this side you will stress this gap. So that is typically a situation you want to avoid by shuffling stitches around. Things should always be distributed as evenly as possible. Possible. I said it before and I'll say it again. The first two or three rounds when knitting in a round with double pointed needles are the most difficult and this is where most beginners give up. It's a bit like stopping five meters before the peak of a mountain without ever seeing the beautiful vista beyond. So learning a proper technique to join in the round is fundamental. So I always cast on one additional stitch then slip that back to the left needle and lift that additional stitch over the one that I've slipped a bit like a bind off then I tighten up and then here comes the little extra tick then I knit one or two more stitches to ensure that the gap can't wear out this join so and I feel this makes all the difference some people also slip this stitch back here knitwise and then they knit them together through the back loop a bit like an SSK or exactly like an SSK and create the join in that manner. You can also slip that stitch back to the left needle and knit these two stitches together. However, I would be careful with either technique. So when you slip two stitches and pass the second over this stitch here doesn't receive another stitch on top of that so you don't add a row. When you knit an SSK or a knit two together you slip this stitch, slip this stitch and now you are this stitch here, this stitch you are adding one row and since you are knitting in an upward spiral this means you are creating a jog right at the joint and this means the it's just a tiny little factor but this means your edge will bunch out this one stitch and it will be a little bit more noticeable but please try out both and see what you like best maybe the knit two together or ssk version is a little bit more noticeable but it's also secure and this also can be a very important factor because as i said those first couple of rounds are also always the most uh, the trickiest and the easier it is for you the neither your project will be and that is I think what matters most. Whenever you are knitting in the round you are knitting in an upward spiral. You are not creating a stack of perfect circles. You are knitting in an upward spiral and you may have observed that when you change colors like we did before you end up with such a little jog and that is the result of knitting in an upward spiral. You can avoid this by knitting one full round in the new color and then as you come across the first stitch in the next row you lift this leg here, the right leg of the stitch one row below back to the knitting needle and then you knit that together with the next stitch. And one row later, this will be the result. No jog, but a rather nice line. I have a full video on knitting jogless stripes here on YouTube, but the concept goes way beyond that. Say you want to add a row of purl stitches in your fabric. Purl stitches can create very nice fold lines if you're doing a double hem for socks or so. But the problem of a jog remains. So here see we, the result will be a jog where this purl stitch, the last purl stitch is slightly above the last. And that typically it can be noticeable and isn't very pretty. To avoid this, you purl your full round but then when it comes to knitting the next round, you slip the first stitch and then you continue knitting. You can also start the purl round with a slip stitch and then continue purling for a very similar result. So here, this is the purl line if you slip the first stitch. Now this is the result of the purl line if you slip the first stitch in the second round. 
you also get a very nice and neat line. Of course, it's not totally invisible. You can still sort of see it, but it's a lot better than ending up with a jog. Now you might be wondering whether this here is a different technique. However, as you knit these two stitches together, what will happen on the back side is this stitch here kind of partially unravels. So it is a lot like slipping stitches as well. It's kind of the same technique. You just do it as an afterthought. Uh, I just feel in a lot of cases when you switch colors, lifting and knitting together is neater than slipping, but try out both. Double pointed knitting needles come in various different sizes. Here we have the standard 15 centimeters or 6 inch version you use for socks. Then you have these longer 20 centimeter uh, or 8 inch needles. Typically you would use these for maybe a hat or some knee high stockings. And then there are also these 10 centimeter or 4 inch needles. You can use them to knit the fingers of some gloves or so. And as a rule of thumb, you should always pick the shortest needle available that can reasonably accommodate all of your stitches with a little margin on the left and right. Why? Well, there are actually a couple of reasons. So, after each pass, you will slide these stitches to the center. And then you will rotate your project around and slide these stitches to the tip so you can continue knitting. And as you can see, when I slide the stitches around, this will put stress on these stitches. And the longer the needle, the longer the duration of that stress. So, and you want to, and you don't want to stress the overly stretch these stitches. So the shorter the needle, the less stress they will experience and the neater your stitch definition. Plus sliding around takes time. So maybe, well, not even half a second more or so, but if you have to do that 10,000 times or a thousand times for a pair of socks, things add up. But also, uh, the bigger those needles are, the heavier your project will be. These needles here are longer and probably weigh maybe a gram more than these needles. Now, it's just one gram, but you have five of them. So the difference is five or maybe six grams. So that, that starts to be noticeable. And on top of them, and the heavier those needles on your project is, the more weight will be put on uh, your wrist. And that can be a factor when it comes to knitting ergonomics but also these big needles are there's no denying even for an experienced knitter it's a little bit more awkward to handle than such a compact project and the easier your project is to handle the neater your stitch definition will be so definitely always pick the shortest uh, available needle that can reasonably accommodate your stitches. Of course, there's the matter of dropped stitches and it's very, very difficult for me to address. Typically, things happen if you are using a needle that is too slick and or you are knitting a little bit too loose. So if you notice stitches are constantly dropping off the needles, the needles are sliding out, consider picking a, well, a needle with a little bit more friction like these bamboo needles and not the slick metal needles. Uh, and of course, Picking longer needles, I said it's not the most ideal thing to do, but if you notice uh, stitches are dropping off left and right constantly, pick bigger needles and pick needles that are not as slick. When it comes to storing a project after a knitting session, I do the following. I slide all the stitches here to the center so they can't drop off. And then when it socks, I wrap my project around my needles then I secure it with one or two wraps of the working yarn and then I can put it in my project bag like this. You could of course, and that's probably the neatest solution, you could get one of these needle garages here, insert your DPNs, press the buttons and everything is nice and secure. And some people also like to use these needle stoppers here. 
but you need a lot of them and I feel it's a little bit awkward plus they can fall off as well so I prefer the other two methods but maybe that needle stoppers is something that works for you and maybe you even want to knit with them at the beginning I feel it's a little bit awkward oh 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 and very very important whenever you stop knitting do the exact same secure your project even if it's just a short break and very important secure that working needle as well. It's so, so easy to sit down on a working needle that was left lying on the couch or it drops and then you step on it or even worse, you get injured. Those knitting needles can be sharp and you would not be the first knitter to have a knitting needle sticking out of their ties or whatever because they sat on them. My last little tip here concerns stitch markers. So the problem about knitting in the round on double pointed knitting needles is that your round typically starts here at the gap and if you add a stitch marker here well it will slide right or simply fall off the next time you rotate your project around. There are two ways to avoid that. So you could attach the stitch marker a couple of rows below and that way you don't have to you just continue knitting and whenever you see the stitch marker you know this is the start of your round and you don't have to slip the stitch marker which can be a little bit annoying or another strategy is to add the stitch marker here but then knit two more stitches and this last strategy has another bonus because when you're knitting stripes or whatever and then your beginning of the round is already in the middle of the needle where you because as I said before you don't want to start a new ball at the beginning of a needle or a new color so this strategy you have to slip the marker but then you know this is where things begin some advanced knitters also, of course, use the cast on tail as orientation. Anyway, those were my tips for knitting with double pointed knitting needles. Make sure to comment below if you have any questions. Subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss any new videos. And happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.